Hello everybody and welcome to session five of Glow Your Own. It's great to be back. As usual, we have uh, Sophie and Sarah and Caitlin. Uh, and this time round, we're not going to be doing a huge amount of coding. We're going to do a little bit of crafting instead. And so it's going to be me doing some examples of crafting and, and then some other people are going to join in and show what they've got. Uh, we might do a tiny bit on Tinkercad just to show you how to do some little tricks that might be useful to you. But on the crafting today, I'm going to show you some examples of things that you can do with your Arduinos, which you have all been putting together. Uh, and we've got some upcycling ideas and we've got some crafting ideas. But the idea is you can use anything that you think is suitable. So stuff out of a recycling bin, things that you've had in a cupboard for a while that you've got permission to cut up and use, things that are shiny, things that are see-through, and sometimes things that are not see-through to make a shadow. So one of the things that is really helpful to be able to do with your Arduino is once you've got, I'm gonna show you this very simple circuit. This is a circuit that we made in week two. And it's simply, uh, I wonder if I can spotlight my... Um, I have. I'm oh, thank you. <laughs> so, so my crafting camera <laughs> here, um, so this is the simplest circuit that we've made. It's just two LEDs. Well, we could make one simpler with just one LED, but I've decided to use two LEDs, um, some resistors, and there's no fancy coding in there. All they do is they just turn on and they stay on. And that, just for this session, is something that I'm going to be doing. So sometimes it's nice to have your lights attached to your breadboard. Sometimes it's quite fun to have them so they're not attached to your breadboard and you can be a little bit more flexible with what you do with your lights. So I'm going to show you a very simple way of um, extending the LED wires so you can have the LEDs away from your breadboard, sort of to make a type of fairy light. So what I'm going to do First of all, is I'm going to remind myself what I've got. Um, I've got some LEDs and I've got power supply, but I've also got a different kind of power supply, just an ordinary coin battery. So this is just a three volt coin battery, which I sometimes use um, for LEDs. And if I just unplug my Arduino, um, so it's turned off, and I'll take out one of the LEDs that I've got in my breadboard there. And you can see there's a long wire and a short wire as usual. And so what I'm going to do, because I'm doing some crafting, is I'm going to draw my LED. So hopefully you can see, I don't know if you can see that. I wonder if I can try and zoom in. Just help me. So hopefully that's that. So this is the arrangement that my LED was in when I was in the breadboard. And so I'm doing that because I've got this coin battery. And so if I hold my LED the right way around and I have the battery that doesn't work and I turn my battery the right way around, the LED works. So I'm just reminding myself the arrangement. And I'm even gonna write that on. So this is the plus side of the battery and that's the minus side of the battery. So I'm just gonna make a note of that. And that'll become useful later on because it can get quite confusing. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna get some wire. And so for those of you who have, have um, registered for an Arduino or given me your address to post things out, we're gonna be posting some of this wire over to you. This is just wrapping wire um, that is uh, a type of wire that you can use to kind of wrap things in, but it's also electrical and it's very safe to use. And it's really easy to work with. Um, so all I've done is I've cut a little piece of wire um, and I'll just cut another piece because I need two. Um, so if I just, with a normal pair of scissors, cut a piece of this wrapping wire. And then the little trick is you need to expose the end of your, the kind of wire part. Is that in the camera? So if you uh, bring a little black, block up because it might be easier 
easier to see that uh, if I put it on a piece of black. So this is the wire that I've just cut. And if you take a pair of scissors and you use them closed, you don't need to open them. It's just the sort of the side of the scissors. You can just put that against the wire, push it and, and then pull and it will break off the plastic casing, exposing the little bit of silver wire. So I hope you can see there's a little yellow wire with a little bit of silver wire exposed. And so you can sometimes even do it with your fingers. It's not super strong. Um, sometimes people have wire snippers um, or something else. That's great. Uh, but just a simple way is a pair of scissors with the edge of the scissors so the scissors aren't open and you can just um, you can just break it off like that. So the next thing you want to do is to get your LED. And this is where it's helpful to have drawn out what your LED looks like. So if you just force the legs apart, hopefully you can see I force the legs apart a bit. And this is where it becomes difficult to remember which is the long leg and which is the short leg. And so what and it's not super important right now, but if you can get your piece of wire around one of the legs, then so what I tend to do is get the end of the wire of the LED and the end of the wire that I've just exposed, pinch them together with your fingers, and then just wrap it around a few times just to have a little spiral around the leg of your LED. And then if you double back on yourself, carry on wrapping round, you've then made sure you've got a good connection of the exposed metal part of the wire that's then wrapped around twice with a piece of the insulated wire. So it should be nice and secure. So I'm just going to do that one again. So this is again just taking the ends of the exposed cable that you've got and the end of the LED and wrapping it as a spiral around the LED leg and then doubling back on yourself just to make it nice and secure. So you end up with something that has an LED that's got some really long wires <laughs> which means you can have your wires far away from the breadboard the, and you can have it loose like this if you want to. So it's got um, sort of two two wires that are kind of uh, separate from each other. Quite helpful because sometimes you have lots of these things. Is if you just twist it, you can combine these wires together. So you just have a single long wire, and that's just twisting it round and round and round and round and round until you have a nice long wire. And so this is why we did our preparation before with our long leg and our short leg on the piece of paper, because now I have no way of telling, it's a 50-50 chance, which leg, and I'm gonna cut them both to the same length so it's not looking like I'm cheating. Um, so you can see I've got my LED that's wrapped around and I've got two of my uh, sort of legs, extended legs of my LED, just like that. And so what I need to do now is expose the two wire parts. So just again, taking my scissors that are closed or a wire snip, or this is sometimes it works first time. There we go. Sometimes it takes a few goes. So this is back to where we were before. So we've got the exposed ends of the wire. And now it comes back to my breadboard. So I'm going to put my breadboard on this blue block because I want to plug in my wires into my breadboard. But I don't know which way around it is. So this is why I've got my drawing of my, of my little LED set up. And so if I know that my little battery here. I'm going to put my little LED there. So I do not know which way around it's going. So I'm going to try 
Ah, I've got it right first time. So it must mean that this one, which is actually the shorter of the two wires that I've got, is actually the longer wire on my LED, which is the one, which is the cathode, isn't it, I think. So if I put that back into my breadboard, um, I can put that down here. And so these little jumper wires are really helpful because this wire that you've now got is too thin to put into the breadboard. So if you just fold the ends of the wire over uh, once or twice, if you can, it's a little bit fiddly. So I've just folded them over once and I'm going to try and fold them over again. And then if you sort of manage to twist them a little bit, it's very difficult to see. But what I've got is those two little wires that I folded. Um, I don't know if you can see, um, I've sort of folded the ends of the wires over. Uh, so it means that I can poke them into my breadboard. And I've now already forgotten which way around. So I'm going to do my test again with my coin battery. Um, so I'm going to try it this way. Oh, no, it doesn't work. So I keep the coin battery still and swap the LED round like you do. And there we go, it's lit back up again. So I'm quite safe now to poke into my breadboard and I will just use the jumper wire uh, that is already in there. And so this is the tricky bit that's probably impossible to see on the camera. But I'm going to poke it in. It's also very difficult to do when you're talking. Um, so I'm going to try and do it though. I'm going to poke it in to my breadboard. This is hard. So you've got to have a lot of patience for this. Uh, but once it's done, it's great. So this is, there we go, that's one in. So you've got to be patient, it's a bit fiddly, and then we've got the other one to go in. So that's one poked into the breadboard, and I'm just poking in a second one. This is hard. Okay, I think that's almost in. I'm gonna give it an extra, an extra poke. Okay, we're in. Right, and I'm gonna replace that um, jump wire to where it was before as well. So the next thing I'm going to do, because that was a bit of a fiddle, I'm going to secure it in place with a piece of tape. Because <laughs> I don't want those falling out again. And so if I've got that right, and I plug in my Arduino again. So you can see that my regular LED that's already in the breadboard is working. And so is this one that I can now it's now free from the breadboard, so it's nice and easy to use. So that's a little technique of just extending the wires on your LED. So it means that you can almost create your own fairy lights. And that might be useful next week when we start using a servo motor, because you can now have a mobile LED that can just do what it wants to do. I hope that makes sense. We'll try. <laughs> it's very difficult to show on camera um, and sometimes the best thing about crafting is just to have a go and make a start. So that is the first example that I wanted to show you. The next example that I thought it might be quite nice to think about is how to make a casing for your Arduino. And so we've had a little bit of a think um, was looking around at some bits and pieces that might just be in people's houses. And if you've had some um, something that uses chopsticks, if you have some spare chopsticks that you might wash, or you might have some chopsticks that you've not used before and they're just sitting in a, in a drawer, but you also might have 
um, old pens that might not be working anymore, or you might have, um, so I think Sarah's even made some sticks um, out of uh, bits of paper. So you sort of need some, some sticks that are approximately um, sort of 20 centimeters long, thereabouts. It doesn't need to be completely perfect, but something, how do I, this is where it's different, there we go. <laughs> so something that's approximately 20 centimeters long. Um, and so a simple thing to make um, is a little housing like this. So if I zoom out a bit, um, so again, this is just a simple Arduino. I've done a little bit of coding inside. And so I'm going to show you how to make this. And it has your little LED on Arduino lantern inside. So this is what we're going to make in the next uh, 15 minutes or so. It's pretty quick. But that's all. Well, that's what we're aiming for. So I'm going to put that to one side. All you need to make a tetrahedron, and this is what a triangular-based pyramid uh, is called in geometry, is six sticks and some connector. So I've chosen to use six chopsticks and a bit of tape. And so all you need to do, and this is where it's sometimes best to have a nice clean table. So I've made a little bit of space on my working table. And if you start making your first corner of your of your tetrahedron on the table with maybe the sellotape facing upwards then you can just place your two sticks on the piece of tape uh, close it over and it doesn't matter if it's got a little bit of give and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy because um, this is all going to start getting stronger once you've added the all of the six sticks so i'm going to put my first um two sticks together like that. I'm going to make another corner uh, using another piece of tape and another uh, stick there. So I'm just going to join this together and again it's not particularly neat and I'm okay with that. Uh, so I've got this thing that looks like it doesn't really look like a triangle, but it's sort of a small triangle. And this is because it's, I think it's easier to make it so it's a bit tighter and so you can then open this up to make your first triangle that will hold itself together with a little bit of tension like that. So I'm going to lock that in place with a, another little bit of tape, uh, just like so. Uh, so that's my, oops, this is my first equilateral triangle made up. So I'm just going to put that to one side and then I'll make another V shape just using two of my sticks here. So I'm just going to take, as before, just two sticks, hold it together with a bit of tape, attaching it. And so I've got now a triangle and a V. And then this is the tricky bit to make it three dimensional, is if you add one of your sticks to your ready-made triangle. This is harder to do than it, it seems. Um, and it's always helpful if you've got a helper with you, because it might be that someone can hold your stick while you're taping it down. But again, it doesn't need to be super neat, uh, but that's the first one in. I'm going to try and balance it from my hand. And then I'm going to put on, oops, this is where it all starts falling apart. Poke that one back in, like that, and then attach this other stick down there. And then finally, I'm going to add my final stick to give this my strength. Oops, oh dear, it's coming apart. A bit of strength there, and that will give me my final tetrahedron. So sometimes if you wrap a piece of tape around the chopstick to make like a flag, that can replace a friendly, a friendly assistant's hand. Um, but otherwise you can persevere. This is sticking a bit messy. Um, 
Okay, so that one is in place. And then the final corner ready to go in. So you'll find that this doesn't work super easy first time round. And so again, like all the coding, just persevering and being patient is a is a real virtue. So I've got something that's that's now three dimensional. And what I'm going to just do quickly is I'm just going to secure all of these corners in place. Because the hardest bit was making it three dimensional. And once it's got a bit of structure, you can then reinforce it with another little piece of tape like that. So I'm just going to go around all four corners to just reinforce it and a bit of tape. Oh, and that one, and then I've got my fourth one just there. So there we go. So now we've made a, a tetrahedron structure that's reasonably, I can pick it up now, it's reasonably strong. You can't, don't be too, don't be too rough with it because it will fall apart if you're too rough with it. Uh, so I can see Sophie's made, oh, brilliant. Sophie's made, let's see what Sophie's done. So what have you made yours out of, Sophie? So I've made mine out of straws, but I forgot that I was using bendy straws. And so one of one of my legs is a little bit bendy, but I've decided that that just makes it look quirky and interesting. That's what we like. We like a, yeah. bit, of, uh, a bit of handmade. Great. So the next thing, the next thing you want to do is you've made your structure. And this is why it's important to get your length, your size right, because what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to make sure your Arduino fits inside it. And that's when they're approximately 20 centimetres long. You might have to fold your Arduino together. Uh, it does indeed fit inside. So what you might also notice is that on the back of your breadboard, there is a sticky, a bit of sticky, um, if you want to use that. But I want to use my breadboard time and time again so I'm not going to use that method what I might just do is I might just use an ordinary piece of sellotape and because my device is so low power it's and I'm not I'm plugging any of the electronics I'm just going to clip it together with a bit of tape just so it's under control so this is now able to fit inside my tetrahedron structure. So I'm gonna take the Arduino out and just put it to one side. Because we need to wrap it up to make it into a lantern. So there's a piece of tissue paper that I found. It's a little bit big, um, but this could be from uh, some packaging or maybe an old birthday present or something. So I'm one of these people that whenever I get birthday presents, I will keep hold of the paper. And so I have a drawer of just old tissue paper and wrapping paper. Oh, look what Sarah's made. This is great. So Sarah, this is your cardboard, your cardboard sticks. So we've got old straws, we've got chopsticks, and we've got bits of tubing that we've made from a magazine, uh, which, which is great, which is a... <laughs> uh, which I think has an article about the Christmas light festival, doesn't it? So, which is quite fun. <laughs> okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up. So this is again is a tricky thing, wrapping up a triangular structure with a piece of paper. So if you just fold your paper round and begin to sort of wrap it up, and you'll just allow the paper to sort of feel where it goes. Um, and if you get to a convenient bit where you've got the edge nicely wrapping around the, the sort of skeleton of your tetrahedral lantern, that is a good opportunity to get a little bit of tape and just lock it in place inside. And then maybe doing the same with the other little loose end there. Uh, but before I do that, I'm just going to cut that off because what we want to make sure is that this paper is nice and thin. If it's too thick, 
not going to be true and it's not going to look nearly as effective. So just be mindful of when you're wrapping something up, you want to make sure it's nice and thin. Um, so I'm just going to stick that on. So I've sort of made, you know, if you can see, I've made a sort of a little cave of paper um, there. And I've got all of this paper spare. So I'm just going to cut that, cut that away. So I can use that for another project another time. Just take that away. So I've got a nice little lantern that's beginning to take shape. And what you can do is you can just fold up the edges to sort of neaten that up. Again, the nice thing about these projects is they don't need to be super perfect. So I've now made most of a lantern that my Arduino can go in. And if you remember a little while ago, we were suggesting different ways of powering it. So I've just got this um, this uh, USB mobile phone charging battery, which I'm going to plug in my Arduino cable and my Arduino uh, itself. So that can go in there. So I'm going to put that in the lantern. And then it's time to put this thing, if you like, to bed. So I'm going to just fold the tissue paper around and then secure it in place with another little bit of sticky tape. And another little bit of sticky tape. There. So there we have it. We have uh, a little a lantern casing. Uh, and that you need to be careful because the Arduino is just loose at the bottom. Um, you can just have this Arduino on your tabletop. Um, and if you're, so that was the Arduino that I just made with the extender wire, which just has static um, lights in it. But then this is the one that I showed you before. And I've put some flashing lights in there. So this is the second version. So if you wanted to, be a bit fancy with your coding, you can have um, a lantern that has some flashing lights in it too, so that's quite fun. And if it's got a mobile battery on it, you can have it on your windowsill or you can have it um, anywhere you like, really. So that's, that's some examples of lanterns that you can make with paper and some chopsticks. So I want to see now, I want to see how Sarah's and Sophie's lanterns are, are getting on. So we're making some progress. So Sophie, can we see your, how, how are you getting on? Well, I'm not as speedy as you. And also I don't have a piece of tissue paper that's as big. So I've got two different bits. Oh, hang on. I just need to unblur myself, don't I? Don't judge <laughs> the fact that I my hair is all messy as well. Um, <laughs> so. So I'm using different pieces. I've got one blue and one yellow. So I've got two sides done. I'm just about to do the next one. That's and great. I might use green. That's great. And this is the really good thing about recycling is that sometimes, so my lantern was a plain white tissue paper lantern. Whereas I'm also one of these people that keeps tissue paper uh, for another time is that you can have much more interesting designs when you've been using found materials. How's your lantern getting on, Sarah? It's doing okay. I we're in the middle of of moving some stuff around in our house, so I can't find my stash of leftover tissue paper. Though I know that I have some, but what I did find was some scrap fabric. So I tried to wrap mine in some sort of grey fabric, but it doesn't work quite as well as the tissue paper. I can paper, see it though. I, I can see think. it. You can see the light through it, but it doesn't yeah. look quite as lantern-y. So I might have a little rethink, or I might put extra LEDs so I've got one on each side, maybe, yeah. so that they poke through. But I, uh, yeah, I've got some, found all sorts of random stuff to attach. But it was good. I made myself a nice long LED strand. Great. And it looks really good because now my Arduino is not in the lantern. It's nice and far away it keeps I can have my LED in so yeah work in progress but I'll, uh, I'll keep working on it I'm quite happy with it so far. Uh, how about how about Kate and Kathy's back too so uh, I wonder how if you've been making um, a little lantern casing 
uh, for me, I can't find any chopsticks. Well, I don't know where my old pens are, but I did find that I've got um, an egg carton downstairs. So I'm going to try and do something with that. Maybe some uh, flowers, uh, like oh, the LEDs. Not sure, but I'm still in process of making them. Oh, great! I've got an egg. I've got an egg carton trick. Uh, I could show you. So egg cartons are great examples of lantern housings. So, Kathy, what have you been making some lanterns? I have been making some lanterns. Now, I didn't have any chopsticks or pens or anything to hand, so I raided my um, my recycling and found um, a bit of plastic bottle, which I've sliced in half. I found some bits of bubble wrap, some ribbon from a birthday gift, and a packet of crisps that I've um, sliced up so that the uh, the silver uh, from the inside of the packet of crisps is showing um, and so then um, you can have your LEDs on extender wires so your um, Arduino can be separate but you can then attach some lights inside that and it sort of looks a bit like I don't know a jellyfish maybe or some kind of alien creature so that was one Great. option. I Love also it. found... Very shiny. <laughs> I also found a milk carton Oh, wow. And decided to make a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> so do, do, do you not recognise the hair? <laughs> I do recognise the hair. It's amazing. Um, and I've given my self-portrait some slightly scary blue eyes. <laughs> that's amazing. And that's another great thing, that when you find bits of recycling or bits of stuff that might otherwise get thrown away, is that you might just go, oh, there's a face in there. So I see how you've made the handle into a nose. Yeah. And you've got the eye sockets. That's great. That's really inventive. That's cool. So there's something around keeping hold of all these materials that we'd otherwise just chuck in the bin uh, and finding a second life for them. And that's really great. Wonderful lanterns there. Um, okay, so egg boxes. Caitlin's mentioned an egg box. So I have an egg box also to hand. Um, and so I might show you a little trick. I think you're spotlighted now. Am I spotlighted? Oh, oh no, you've oh. undone it. Oh, no, okay. okay. <laughs> Could you fix me up there again? There you go. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is just one standard common or garden egg box, uh, but with a little bit of glow your own technical wizardry, uh, you can make it into an egg box that is like this. So I'm just going to plug that into my battery again. And so I now have a spinning egg box clock thing. <laughs> and so I'll show you inside what it looks like. Uh, and again, this is not super difficult coding. It's all the stuff that we've done before. Uh, there's no sensor in it. So all I'm doing is plugging it into the power supply and it's just 12 LEDs uh, that go round and round. Well, they don't go round and round, they go off and on in sequence. Um, so if I open up this egg box, this is when it starts to go a bit crazy. Um, you'll see inside of this egg box, hopefully I'm going to try and get as close as possible to this. Um, There. So you can see evidence of the wire extensions that we were talking about before. And there you go. They're a bit neater this time because I had a bit more time uh, to do it. So I've got 12 pairs of LEDs that have been given the wire extension treatment that you saw before. And they've all been put into my breadboard. And I've poked the LEDs through the hole of this egg box lid and I've managed to flatten down the cones in my egg box and so I've managed to fit my ed my Arduino and my breadboard and a whole bunch of LEDs inside something that is not exactly um, a piece of professional electronics but it's in its own casing um, and so we oftentimes you know the bones and remote controls and all the rest of the bits and pieces that we have at home that are all electronic um where's that gone um 
they're usually in a piece of plastic molding and if you take them apart obviously don't take apart um, electronics that are working uh, ask permission before you do take things apart because it might be that people don't want them to be taken apart but if you have things that are broken um and and they're not as in damaged broken if they're just old uh, it might be that if you take the back off you can have a look and see what's inside and you'll find it looks a little bit like your arduino and breadboard situation um, and they've just got a fancy housing and i've just chosen to use an egg box uh, card as my fancy housing and so the simple trick i'm going to show you with the egg box is the if you just i mean you can do this with any size egg box if you have uh, a larger one and uh, i've just got a box of six eggs is that if you get the two cones that separate the eggs and you chop them off i'm going to do and cut one off there and i'm going to cut off the other one just like that so you now have the neck box that you can see through and you could also do something quite fun with that so you could use um, I'm looking at the wrong camera. There we go. Where's the? So there we go. <laughs> uh, so you've got two holes in your standard egg box because I've just taken off the two cones, and you could do something fun. You can almost, you know, that's almost like a a start of a face itself, isn't it? But to make a piece of electronics housing, is you can just push these down to make yourself a nice little useful box but before you push them down one of the things that might be helpful to do this is where i'm going to have to take apart my lantern that i've just made um, and i'll try and do it neatly to get my Gino out and my led there we go so i'm going to feed my USB wire through the box. And then I'm gonna where are we? And then I'm gonna just fold that other one down. So I've now got a wire that's coming out of the bottom of my egg box. And I can then just put in this whole bunch of stuff and I have my LED and I'm just going to take um, a pair of scissors and just be careful with these. So you want to just make a tiny, tiny hole um, smaller than your LED to poke through. If you just make a tiny pinprick hole in your egg box, you can then just force your, let's see if I can do this one first time. Let's see if I can get it. It's so difficult working with these. There we go. Um, and if you just poke it through, you can just see the LED has just popped through. And that's exactly what's happened with this one here. The LED's just been poked through the cardboard. And, and I'm just going to plug it in to the power supply. And then I can close up my egg box carton. So you can see, oops, there we go. I'm going to hold it up. I'm going to hold, I'm going to spotlight my other camera because this one's too difficult to use. Um, that's what might, there we go. So, so what we're going to do. So you can have a single LED or you can have several LEDs doing something just in a simple egg box. And this is the same technique, just there's a few more um, going on in here. Um, so I hope that's a useful example of how you can use just found materials uh, to have a really cool portable lantern that's either made out of old bits of pens or bits of sticks or old bits of egg boxes or whatever you have lying around and plastic bottles. So uh, that's that's some examples that I've tried to make. Spotlight. There we go. Okay. So I think is that there we go. Back to back to normal screen. So I think there are some of the examples that I've found that might be useful um, to play with. 
but we do have a little bit of time uh, to show you some code practice. So if you've got this, um, if you want to kind of do something that has a spinning uh, a sequence in it, so I've just got 12 LEDs that are happening in sequence. I think Sarah might be able to show you a simple trick of how to do that in Tinkercad, just so you can have that repeated loop going on. So if I'm going to pass over to Sarah, if you can just show. Okay, can you all see my Tinkercad screen? Yes. Yes, got some thumbs up. So I have made Dane's circuit in Tinkercad, but I haven't done any code yet. So someone was asking in the chat earlier about how to do more than one LED at once. Now, this one looks quite confusing because there are 12 of them. Um, I decided to make mine a rainbow pattern instead of Dane's all green, just because rainbows are cool. Um, but if I can zoom in the first LED, you set up like you did before. We've got the negative side of the LED connected by a resistor to the ground, which goes to the Arduino. And then the other side goes straight to one of the pins, in this case, number 13. And for a second LED, I've done the exact same thing, but I've just put it next to it. So I've done it 12 times in a row. I've put one more LED, one more resistor, and one more wire to connect to the Arduino. So once you've got one LED and then two LEDs, you can add as many in as you've got space on your breadboard and on your Arduino to get them working. So if I go to the code section now, um, so it can be quite annoying to have to write code for this many LEDs. So we're going to show you a little trick to make it a bit quicker and a bit easier. Um, but first of all, I need to delete the code that was already there. I'm doing this quite slowly because Zoom is hiding my little uh, little bin in the corner. Um, and I want my code to run forever. So we were like Dane's little, we're going round, 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 round. We don't want it to stop. So I'll keep it in the forever loop. And the first thing I'm going to do is tell it to turn on the first red LED by bringing across my set pin to high. And my first LED is connected to pin 13 on the Arduino. So I'm going to change my pin zero to pin 13 and set it to high, which is good. Uh, now we want a little pause before we move on to the next one so that our eyes have time to see it. Um, so computers can be really fast. So if we have, if I forget the pause, I won't know what's going on. I'm, I always forget the pause. I'm very guilty of doing that. But one second's quite long. How long do we think we want for Danes? Half a second, even, even quicker change. What do you think? Anybody like to suggest a option for in here? Pop it in the chat box if you want to pick a number. <laughs> so we've got a point one anymore. Point one. Oh. Two, oh my word, two, so point Ooh. two, point five, point two, point five. Ooh. Well, let's so try point, point, point two five. We'll go in the middle. <laughs> point two five is a good number, yeah. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is. Before I turn the next one on, I need to turn the original one off. So I'm going to use the duplicate function because I'm quite lazy. Programmers are always quite lazy. and We don't like having to write code over and over and over again. So I'm going to right click on this section of code and click duplicate. And it's duplicated both of those two blocks. So I'm going to set pin 13 to high. Then I want to turn pin 13 off and I would like to turn pin let's just double check the orange one is connected to pin 12 I want to say pin 12 to high so now my code says turn the first one off wait a quarter of a second turn it off and the next one on and then I can keep duplicating each little section and changing the numbers so this time number 12 needs to go off and number 11 needs to come on and I can just keep going over and over again. Somebody stop me if I make a mistake. It's very easy when you're trying to be quick. 11 off, 10 on. And I could now duplicate a whole section at once if I want to, but it does become a little bit difficult to remember where you've got in the sequence. And also it looks like my Tinkercad has just frozen. 
so I might not be able to put all of this in. But that is how you would connect all of your LEDs one after the other onto your screen. So I'm going to um I'm going to keep going because I like to complete it now that I've started, but um, I can pass back over to uh, to Dane to show off the next thing, if you would like, or you can well, sit and, and watch exact, me change all the numbers. Exactly, that's exactly what I was doing. Um, it's just turning it off and turning it on, waiting. Um, and so once you've got a few tricks up your sleeve with what you can do with sequences, there are other ways to do it, but just as people who are beginning their coding and making uh, careers and creative journeys sometimes these little workarounds are really useful just to go oh, I think I understand a way of just bodging that one um, and a bit like you know when we're making lanterns out of bits of scrap material or making uh, tetrahedrons out of chopsticks that aren't really super neat <laughs> it doesn't really matter because uh, it's the overall effect and as you get better oh, Sophie that's looking good <laughs> <laughs> and as you get better and better at it you then might find yourself uh doing what caitlin does all the time or what people do in sophie's uh teams do all the time of building really fancy equipment that looks at deep space or um particle physics kind of super beams and things these <laughs> kind of things that people are building around oxford uh, and across the country in the uk doing these really fancy uh, bits of technology. And sometimes it always starts with little simple craft projects like this. So you don't know what the future looks like. So how are you getting on, Sarah, with your code? Is it playing? Is I'm it doing... going to test it now. We'll see what it's doing. It's going quite fast. Ah, something's gone slightly wrong in my code there. See that last LED there? That is ah. not turning back off. So somewhere in my code, I've forgotten to turn off the thing connected to pin number two. So let's have a quick look down. We start at 13, we change 13 to 12, we change 12 to 11, keep going, keep going, keep going. At the bottom, I ah. change pin three to pin two, and then the loop, we wait 0.25 of a second, we go all the way back up to the top, and it changes pin 13 to come on without turning two off. So we could either put number two up here so that I've got two pins in each little section. I like doing that because I like everything to look um, nice and symmetrical. But if it makes a bit more sense to you, you can instead. Oh, it's a long list of code now. There's a long list of code, ah, isn't it? <laughs> I can't get to it. Here we are. I could put it at the very end of my loop before it goes back up to the top tell it to turn pin two off and without waiting any further, turn pin 13 or the first one back on. So let's uh, stop the simulation and, oh, there we are, start the simulation again. That Perfect. looks more like Yay. it. Yay! <laughs> okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Does it look like your code, Dane? It looks exactly, it looks exactly the same. I think mine was point two, so yours is a little bit mm. quicker, but you know, I wouldn't expect anything <laughs> less from you. It's a bit quicker and a bit better and more colourful as well. <laughs> <laughs> but Fantastic. hopefully, hopefully that's some really nice ideas. We'd love to see your equivalents of egg boxes and um, plastic bottles and tetrahedron lanterns, uh, anything else that you've made. Um, it's so nice uh, to see how you've been using your own creativity and technical wizardry to make some cool stuff. Next week is we'll be able to build in some physical movement using a servo motor. And that means that if you've got um, your Arduinos with an extended LED, you can start making a basically a little robot. Uh, which can sense its surroundings and move. So that's the beginnings of robotics, uh, which is really exciting. But I think it's been great to have a little bit of a play today. So I hope you've had fun with this crafting session. It's nice to have a little bit of a play uh, with materials and see what our uh, technical skills can do when translated into an artistic output. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next time to do the last session of coding of Blow Your Own. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs>